Welcome to the news belt of the show. In our first story, 12 remand prisoners at the Nsawam medium security prison reclaimed their liberty on Wednesday when they were discharged by an ad hoc court in the penitentiary as part of the Justice for All program. One other inmate was acquitted and discharged, while 10 others were granted bail, with two others denied bail. Now, the prisoners, most of whom were locked up for various offenses, including murder and unnatural carnal knowledge, have been languishing in the Nsawam prison for years without trial. Addressing journalists after the hearing, uh, Court of Appeal judge, uh, who sits with additional responsibility as a High Court judge, Justice Efia Sewa Saribuchi, lauded the Justice for All program and urged investigators to work diligently to avoid that situation where pretrial inmates were unjustly left to languish in prison. The Justice for All program, which started in 2007, has so far resulted in a significant reduction in prison overcrowding from 51 percent prisoner overcrowded population as of december 2018 to 42.6 percent in may 2024. wednesday's hearing at the Salon medium security prison was in two ad hoc courts presided over by justice lydia osei marfo and his lordship justice ekufu both judges had a total of 24 applications split between them Court of Appeal Judge Justice Ifia Sewa Asari Boche was the supervising judge. Ghana's prison population, as at the end of May 2024, stood at 14,647, as against the authorized nationwide prison capacity of 10,265. The population is made up of 13,057 convicts, with 1,000. 590 pre-trial convicts. So it's, it's joy and jollity for about 22 inmates here at the Nsawan Medium Security Prison who have been granted bail and some discharged. In all there were 24 cases and 22 of them have their liberties restored now. 12 of them have been discharged, 10 have been granted bail, 2 of them denied. We have again today witness the impact of the Justice for All program that has brought many vulnerable remand inmates who as a result of lack of legal representation and other factors could have spent years in prison without trial. From the court proceedings today, I can only admonish investigators to be diligent and not leave the vulnerable remand inmates to languish in prison for months and in some cases for years. I also wish to emphasize that by law, only judges and magistrates are authorized to renew and sign warrants for inmates. As part of efforts to decongest the prisons, stakeholders in the justice delivery system are aggressively pushing for the community service bill to be passed into law. Addressing the media, then someone medium security prison, executive director of Perfecta of Sentiment, a not-for-profit organization championing improved prison conditions, Jonathan Osei-Ousu expressed confidence in the progressive nature of the bill. We are praying and calling on the minister, it is their baby, that the minister of interior and attorney general should expedite action at cabinet level so that the bill can be put before parliament. If that is done before uh, October, we are hopeful that at least before parliament rises or election gets so busy or campaign gets busy, they will be able to push this agenda through so that those who have been arrested for misdemeanors, minor offenses, can be given alternatives to incarceration, do some community service, sweep on the compound and etc. so that to save government costs and it will bring us some relief. Some discharged inmates, including a self-confessed Nigerian scammer, narrated the circumstances that landed him in prison to join news. We have an issue fighting, so I took my property, took my laptop, then I left to the hotel where the accident happened. Mm. What, what was the accident? I in night around something 12 o'clock midnight, I went to church, a long number, mm. to pick an prostitute there. Mm. So the next morning I tried to wake her up. No way, she didn't wake up. 
part of efforts to improve the criminal justice system, the Judiciary Criminal Justice Committee, commissioned by the Chief Justice, has proposed some pragmatic interventions to improve jury trial and criminal trials in general. The TV Dries, John News, in Sawan Medium Security Prison. Now, a member of the Northern Regional Peace Council, Al Haj Abdul Razak Sani, has called on journalists to help build the Ghana everyone is yearning for by always reporting accurately. He asserted that when journalists report with bias, it has the pot potential of clouding actions by duty bearers. Al Haj Sani, who said this at a workshop in Tamale organized by the Peace Council in partnership with the Catholic Relief Services for Elections, monitors um, said accurate early warnings in conflict management was key and stopping conflicts from escalating. 30 monitors were drawn from violent prone and border communities in the northern, northeast Savannah, upper west and upper east regions. The training was to equip them with reporting skills to report accurately and timely to prevent conflict. Speaking to the media, member of the Northern Regional Peace Council, Alaji Abdul Razak Sani, called on journalists and people in the north to be guarded in their use of social media. Reporters being biased, then it's going to have a problem on the actions that are going to be taken. So it's important that they give reports that, that, that are credible, that are fair, that would meet the expectations of those who are going to take action. That will result in the, the changes that we want, in the desired uh, um, results that we all yearn for. Uh, I did also caution them to make sure that their reports come very timely because when they are timely, uh, we, are, we, are, we are dealing with early warnings. So when the reports come timely, then appropriate actions can be taken. We are in f for a context of two brothers. Supposedly. And so we are equally you know, worried that people will use the social media to foment trouble and to do other things that is not necessary. So, in this context, I would want the youth to use the social media responsibly. Project manager of Povesa project at CRS. Ms. Adeline Yeriyela said the aim is to improve civilian security trust relationship in Ghana beyond election 2024. This project is a Dutch government funded project which CRS is currently implementing in partnership with the National Peace Council and the Kofi Annan Center. The main aim of this project is to improve civilian security trust relations in Ghana, of which we are doing in about five regions in Ghana. That's the Upper West, Upper East, Northeast, and we have the Northern and Greater Accra region. Now, Kobe Bar, an old community in the Ifia constituency of the Western region, has endured relentless flooding for years. Whenever it rains, residents find themselves scrambling to safety, trying to salvage their belongings from the rising water. The visible cracks on many buildings in the area tell the story of the devastating impact floods have had on this community. In a bid to alleviate the long-standing flooding issue, Isaac Bwamanyako, the MPP's parliamentary candidate for the Ifia constituency, has teamed up with the Ifia Municipal Assembly. Together, they have distilled the major drainage system in Kobe Bar as the primary cause of the recurrent flooding. Of the Ifia constituency lies Kobe Bar, an old community that has battled flooding for years. Each time the rain pours, fear and uncertainty Group the residents. Wow. 
go to if I decide to We suffer a lot. If you go our bad house and uh, our authority, please almost choke uh, what the signs of devastation are clear. Most buildings here bear visible cracks, a stark reminder of the relentless impact of flooding. When it rains, each and everyone comes. Each and one, everyone comes. It is sudden, it's get flooded. And this is our dream. If you get um, a storm tree, it will have a in fact, since I was giving birth, this place has been always been flooded. They have always have this problem of flood. Even when you check this building, there's a building out there, just behind us. It's full of water. Anytime it rains, you always have that problem of flood. But now, there is a glimmer of hope. Isaac Buamanyako, the NPP parliamentary candidate for the Afia constituency, where the FIA Municipal Assembly have taken action. As part of our effort to improve on our sanitation in the FIA constituency, uh, we decided to do a sanitation exercise in every major community that faces sanitation, sanitation challenges. And as part of my visit uh, across the length of the of the constituency, I realized that uh, Many, many areas which get flooded during the rainy season, and it has been very, very difficult for our community people. And so, as part of the effort to distill and decongest the major cutters or drains around the community, I partnered the municipal assembly and the other stakeholders to undertake this kind of exercise. So, this is one of about 15 exercises that will be conducted across the community in order to open up the drains and allow, allow the water to flow over the community so that we won't experience the floods and the bad the conditions that are in place. Now, approximately 800,000 active staff members of the Kolibu at Teaching Hospital now have access to 100% at free medical care at the facility through the hospital's employee assistance program. Speaking at the program's launch, the, executive, uh, the chief executive officer of the hospital, Dr. Pukuwari Ampoma, reiterated the management's commitment to ensuring the well-being of their staff. He also expressed hope the program would be extended to include retired staff members from the hospital. Semifat Pesu has more in this report. This program aims to support the staff of Kulebu Teaching Hospital with free medical care psychological and financial assistance and legal counseling. Under this program, staff can assess the hospital's facility at no cost, including medical treatment. It is the first employee assistance program in a public hospital in the country. Chief Executive Officer Dr. Opoku Wariampuma stated that management is dedicated to the well-being of its staff. Kolebu Teaching Hostel is the first government hospital that has introduced 100% staff Medicare. So our staff are now enjoying 100% Medicare and that's a start. Now we are looking at the numbers because this comes at a certain cost because not every um, expenditure will be covered by health insurance. So the hospital is actually paying for, to provide this service. And so we are looking at the sustainability. So once we have done that and then at the moment dependents of staff are enjoying 50% cover. All right. So we want to see how this goes. And if you're able to sustain it, then we are going to move to 100% cover for the dependence of staff. And then we also want to extend it to our retirees. Blokem Ghana, the producers of Belakwa Mineral Water and Bell Drinks, has partnered the hospital on this initiative. Marketing manager for Belakwa, Chris Akode, indicated that the company prioritized health interventions as part of their corporate social responsibility. They decided to support the rollout of the program. So for us at Belakwa, having a mental well-being is very key to us. Um, you know, mental well-being includes you know the emotional side, the psychological side. If Ghanaians don't have that same mental ability, it affects how they behave, how they think. You know, and for us at Belakwa, consumers are very dear to us. Ghanaians are very dear to us. So any activity that actually has to do with um, supporting the rental well-being of citizens is something that is very dear to us. And so coming to Kolebu and then hearing the CEO talk and other guests and everyone, you know, 
really encourages us to do more. The hospital management hopes to extend the program to the families of their staff members and retired staff. And the number of staff in that previous story was 8,000, not 800,000. On to our next story. Now, the convener of the Global Crusade with Kumui, uh, Dr. William F. Kumui, says the church is ready to put action to vision of the Christian faith that seeks to transform the social and economic status of the African continent. Dr. Kumui is in Ghana for the July edition of Global Crusade, aimed at fostering national cohesion, spiritual growth, and social economic development. There's more in this report. Convener of the Global Crusade with Kumui receiving a warm welcome as he lands in the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumase, for a transformative gathering of Christians and other professionals. The Global Crusade is a monthly conference that aims at propagating the gospel and rekindling steadfastness in believers while supporting the society through social interventions. This will go on record that there was nothing like it before. Speaking at a media engagement ahead of the week-long activities, Dr. William F. Kumi is anticipating a transformational encounter through a collective effort. I want to unite together, open our eyes, thank God for what the church has done, what Christian professionals have done, and look forward as we open our eyes to what we can do. Not only for the youth to change our world and to touch the economy and every area of profession. The Lord giving us vision and strategy and drive to make things better. Not to leave the world, our world, the way we found the world when we came in. So, in unity together, under the grace of God, we'll see how we have more vision. And we put action to our vision to make economy and everything better. The interdenominational event, hinged on Christian principles, is aimed at promoting national cohesion and integration for peace and conflict resolution. As over 17 countries in Africa hit the post to elect new crops of leaders, Dr. Kumi is optimistic of positive outcomes for the elections on the African continent. When we talk of full salvation, we're not just talking about, you know, I'm born again, I'm saved. What God wanted the world to be. He wants to make us be agents and carrier of the full salvation of the Lord. And as for the election and everything, God is in control of every nation. He'll give us his very best for our country here in Ghana. Stakeholders of the Christian fraternity in the Ashanti region are in anticipation of a transformative crusade. Uh, we have prayed and we are uh, in anticipation. We know what God is using you and your team to do around the group. And we believe that Kumasi being what it is, we've had many, many, many crusades here. But we believe that this will be one that is of a difference. And we are praying that all the programs, God will reveal himself to us. We are grateful to God that this day has come before Christ has come. And so therefore, we really are going to receive salvation in our land. The glory of God will be lifted up and definitely souls will be saved, not just in Kumasi, but across the globe. God bless everyone. The JCK Ghana slated for July 25 to July 30 at the Kumasi Sports Stadium is on the theme Full Salvation and Total Healing Through Christ. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Quicko. Stay with us up next. We serve you our business updates for today. Let's get right down to it. Increase your revenue base and diversify your revenue sources to support expenditure. That's the advice from senior partner at Deloitte, Yao Lati. According to him, these two measures are among other innovative ways government can consider in order to boost its revenue mobilization. According to government, 
about 1.5 million taxpayers out of 7.9 million honor their obligations. Speaking to Joy Business on how to improve revenue mobilization, Yaolate stated that there had to be a deliberate effort to support the production yields of the country's cocoa industry. Now that we've been able to secure debt restructuring program and we are heading toward the 55% of GDP, we should increase our revenue base. If you increase your revenue base, you are able to support your expenditure. But if we do not increase our revenue base and our expenditure is increasing, we are going to have a rising budget deficit and we are going to go back into the same problem. So one of the ways that government is uh, using to increase our revenue base is to ensure that our tax laws are, are complied with or enforce the tax laws. But I think we should not only rely on taxes, otherwise it will be counterproductive. A lot of business are complaining about the numerous taxes, the amendment in taxes, enforcement of taxes on them. And so for me, we should diversify our revenue sources and one of the ways of doing that is to increase the production of our primary commodity, which is if we support programs that will increase the production of cocoa, increasing the yield in cocoa sector, it will help us. The other thing is to increase production and export of gold. And the last is hydrocarbon, that's oil and gas. If we implement the right measures to increase the production of our primary commodities, we are going to earn more revenue as opposed to keeping uh, taxing people and then obviously, like I said, if business are overtaxed, it will be counterproductive. They will, be not, they will not be able to employ people and you will not get the revenue that we anticipate to get. And that's it for business. It's also a wrap for the AM News this morning. But before the news review, here's our currency market for today.